Welcome to the Website Quality Audit, a query recipe from Coding is for Losers. The promise of the Website Quality Audit is to aggregate all the SEO data that you require to do your job every day and every month. That includes Google Analytics data, Google Search Console data, a full site crawl, and of course, backlinks data. The ultimate goal of the Website Quality Audit, and we think where it gets really interesting, is using that raw data to actually recommend actions across your site through technical improvements, on or off page improvements, and site architectural improvements. The Website Quality Audit makes these recommendations out of the box. This recipe ultimately consists of three assets that are delivered to your team daily and monthly for you to use however you like. The first is a Sheets workbook, which is kind of a to-do list or next steps, recommended actions for each page on your site. The second is a Data Studio dashboard, which you can use as kind of pulse reporting on your site's performance, and that's refreshed daily. And the third is actually access to the underlying raw data in BigQuery that's used in this recipe. Um, so if your team knows SQL, you can kind of go to town with running your own types of analyses. So let's dive into what those actually look like so you can get you know, kind of a deeper feel for it. So here we are in the Website Quality Audit Workbook, and this is for a run I did on my own blog, Coding is for Losers. First, you'll see along the bottom we have four separate tabs. First, we have a raw database, and this contains over 100 fields across analytics data, search console, the crawl data, and links data from Majestic. Um, and this is really all the data that you'd need to make um, decisions for a page on a site. So we have you know, meta titles and descriptions, their lengths, whether they contain the top keyword, tons of fields like that, um, all of which are documented in our kind of standard operating procedure. So I won't go through each of those fields here. Um, but the important thing to know is all of this data is at your fingertips um, in raw form in sheets when you need it. Um, and then the following three tabs are really more uh, defined and slimmed down versions of this view, filtered for specific actions that you may want to take on your site. Uh, the first one is technical actions. So stuff like canonical URLs, um, fixing any broken links, uh, fixing pages that are missing from a crawl or potentially should be no indexed. Stuff like this, technical actions that you might want to take. Uh, the important thing is this actions tab only contains a handful of columns, right? Just the technical columns that you need um, to make those decisions. Uh, the second action tab is for on or off page actions. These are really more marketing focused uh, actions like rewriting meta descriptions, adding pagination to pages, adding schema tags, uh, building external links, stuff like that. So, and here we only include, you know, kind of analytics data and necessary fields for those types of marketing decisions. And the last group of actions is site architectural. This is my personal favorite. It really helped me with looking at Coding is for Losers site architecture. Uh, it deals with internal linking, uh, cannibalization, and also working with categories. So do you have too many categories on your site? You might want to delete some actions like that. Um, and again, all of these actions are defined very clearly in the standard operating procedure document. So you have documentation that defines specifically what do these actions mean, which I'll get into in a bit. So the second kind of report that you have access to as, as part of the website quality audit is a data studio template. Now, because as part of this, we're updating your Google Analytics and Search Console data every day in BigQuery, uh, you can use Data Studio as kind of a pulse report across your sites. Um, so viewing kind of summary metrics, viewing page level metrics and their keywords, um, month over month and year over year trends. These are things that, as well as, you know, kind of site wide uh, distributions of trends. These are things that Data Studio is a lot better at compared to something like Google Sheets. So we wanted to offer you a secondary option to look at these more site wide type of trends. The other thing that's great that you can do within Data Studio is look at kind of month over month trends for those recommended actions. So going through the last six months or so, you know, how did your need for architectural changes change over time or on page, off page, 
or based on those buckets. Um, and you can also see for a given month how many actions are recommended, what action type are they, how many URLs, and kind of what percentage of your site's traffic. So Data Studio is really good at, at um, allowing you to build these types of summary level metrics. And since it's Data Studio and it's kind of this drag and drop interface, you can go into any one of these charts, you can make your own charts uh, using their kind of native chart builder. Um, and again, because all of these data tables are very well documented, you can really go to town um, making your own types of analyses with this website quality audit data set. The last asset that you have access to as part of any recipe on query.recipes is the actual underlying raw data in BigQuery. This data is yours, it belongs to you and you only, um, and it lives in your BigQuery project ultimately. So disconnected from any activity with query.recipes, this is data that you always have access to in BigQuery. Um, and because you have access to it, you can kind of write your own analyses as you choose or um, look at any of the underlying raw data that you have questions about. So, and again, all of these kind of table definitions um, and all of that stuff is well documented. So you're never confused about where to find different pieces of data. Uh, so for example, here we have all of the raw deep crawl data. This is exported directly from deep crawl after a crawl. Um, so you can view um, the kind of raw feed before we go ahead and, you know, kind of process it in a more organized way for use in the recipe. And it's important to know that if you don't have experience writing SQL um, within something like the BigQuery SQL browser, we do have a, a tutorial on Coding is for Losers to get started with BigQuery SQL and are happy to kind of coach you along the way to getting your team writing SQL and really making the most of having all this data accessible in BigQuery. So how does all this data come together? Every night we pipe into BigQuery, Google Analytics data, um, traffic and conversions by landing page, Google Search Console data, um, impressions and clicks by landing page and keyword, and then every month we run a full site crawl with deep crawl, as well as pulling in majestic links data via the deep crawl API. On any given day, three things need to happen for all of your data to get to your reports in the website quality audit. Uh, around 4 a.m., your raw data will hit BigQuery uh, from APIs like Google Analytics. Around 5 a.m., some SQL models that define the recipe uh, will run on your raw data and deliver just the metrics that we were talking about before. And then around 6 a.m., once those SQL models are finished running in BigQuery, your data is available to view in Data Studio. And following month end, your data is also refreshed in the Sheets workbook. So what about those action recommendations? You know, any action recommendation can be a very fraught process, right? Because there's a lot of logic baked into it. So let's take a closer look at kind of how those shake out. I know I mentioned these before, but I just want to reiterate quickly the four buckets of action that we recommend as part of the website quality audit. The first is technical action. So that's anything related to canonicalization, sitemap coverage, stuff like that. Let's take a look at some example technical actions that we might want to undertake. These are three that I found on Coding is for Losers that are pretty typical, I would say. So first is this URL analysis recipes did not have a canonical URL. It was not found in the crawl. So we want to add it in. A second typical technical action would be this Learn VLOOKUP Google Sheets page. Uh, the page was 404ing, so it actually was a broken link. Um, so we want to fix that broken link where it was found. Um, and a third technical example issue would be uh, a page that's picking up zero traffic, this zero organic traffic, this chef's table page. Uh, we may want to no index that because it's not providing us any organic value. The second are on-page actions. So that's anything relating to your meta descriptions and titles, schema tags and pagination, and the actual content on the page itself, and the relevancy of that for search. The third are off-page actions. So this is really refers to link building. Now let's dig into on and off-page examples, action examples. Um, so this Google Sheets query function post uh, has a content action tagged here of rising content. Uh, you know, usually site audits are kind of negative exercises. You're looking for issues along a site, 
But with the website quality audit, we're really trying to also get into positive affirmations of pages that are doing well. If you work across channels, maybe you wanna promote these pages on via Facebook ads, YouTube ads, whatever it is, because they're content that your audience is liking. A second typical on-page action would be updating meta descriptions or titles to include your main or best keywords. Um, so in, in this case, our Learn VLOOKUP Formula Google Sheets page, we scroll to the right, we can see that, where are they? Our main and best keywords here are Google Sheets VLOOKUP multiple criteria and Google Sheets array formula VLOOKUP. Now we may not want to include either of these, these are obviously long, kind of long tail keywords. Um, we may not want to include either of these in the title, but we may want to include in the description this concept of multiple criteria or array formulas. Um, so you're not gonna just copy and paste this, but it's helpful guidance when you're updating on page. And the fourth are architectural actions. So it's anything relating to changing up your internal linking structure of your site, um, avoiding keyword cannibalization on pages, and refining your categories. In terms of site architecture actions, you know, I know we went over this before with internal linking, um, but let's look at why we do that and what the kind of logic is. So for example, this Learn View Lookup Formula Google Sheets post um, is performing really well, uh, but we find that it only has a small number, only 11 links out. So we may want to increase our internal outlinks to kind of pass that authority from the page outwards on the site. Um, and similarly, this Google Sheets category post performs relatively well for a category, but it has zero internal links in. So we wanna make sure that we're linking properly to our category pages. Also within site architecture actions, we have cannibalization. So if one of these, if any of the pages on our site are cannibalizing for keywords, uh, we want to take care of that and maybe merge them together. And also category action. So if you have a bunch of categories on your site that aren't performing very well, you may want to roll them up. Like I mentioned before, all action recommendations and their logic are fully documented in an SOP doc, which you can find here. Uh, all of these, each action kind of has plain English. Why would we apply specific tags? And this is so that you can understand how the website quality audit is put together, not just blindly accept these recommendations, but instead um, suggest changes where you think changes are necessary so that we can improve the recipe for everyone using it. So you might be saying to yourself, that all sounds great, but how do we actually do this? So let's go through kind of the implementation process and how the website quality audit recipe is priced. We'll always have a kickoff process where we go through the sites that you wanna implement for the recipe, we get access to your BigQuery project and all of the kind of necessary nuts and bolts for us to set this up for you. Um, then your actual first report month, by the third business day, you'll have all of the raw data in BigQuery, you'll have your Sheets workbooks, and you'll have your Data Studio dashboards. Um, and then every month following that, you'll have regular website quality audit runs done for you automatically. Um, so that means analytics data and search console data refresh daily, uh, and crawls run monthly at the end of the month. You can add new sites, or remove sites at any time. The website quality audit, like all of our BigQuery recipes, is priced per site per month. Um, and given it's a per page analysis, we price it based on site size, because our service cost, as well as our cost for deep crawl crawl data, scale with site size. So the base site will be $30 per, per site per month, um, that's $25 for our service, $5 for deep crawl data, and it goes up from there. So medium sized site, five to 20K pages uh, will be $45 per site, 20 to 50K pages, $75 per site. And an enterprise site of greater than 50K pages uh, will be $100 per site and up depending on size. Um, so when you look at the comparison between this pricing and setting all of this data wrangling and data modeling up internally, um, it can look like a real bargain based on what you pay your team and what you pay for tools. We genuinely think you'll love this website quality audit recipe from Coding is for Losers. Take care.